Okay, let's move on. And Dr. Cole, next topic here on our show, something I've been looking forward to uh, talking about, recovery for endurance athletes, both in and out of competition, the importance of recovery instead of just the back-to-back workouts, right? It, Steve, it's something that it, we're all we're emphasizing a lot now, but it's hard for people to understand because, you know, when someone's really into high endurance training, for example, they often are not giving their bodies time to recover. And every time we work out, we actually have breakdown at the same time. In addition to that, to do serial back-to-back workouts without proper recovery, the next workout often isn't as efficient. So uh, it's a very important topic, and I love covering it on our show. We've got a great guest uh, joining us right now here on Sports Medicine Weekly, Robbie Ventura. Robbie is the founder and owner of Vision Quest Coaching. Been doing it since 2000, uh, 19 plus years. They have five locations, including Chicago, Glencoe, and Tucson, Arizona, and uh, VQ providing expert training programs for over 500 endurance athletes of all levels, from beginner to elite, including cyclists and triathletes ranging from 8 to 80 years old. Robbie, thanks for joining us. Uh, Right to it, what are important components to recovering from severe endurance exercise? Yeah, I think, you know, endurance exercise has become completely in vogue. You know, the same as cycling and triathlon and running and do golf. So a lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are excited about it. And it attracts a certain type of person, usually an A personality, wants to do something like an Ironman or a century ride or these epic cycling events. And oftentimes, you know, it's not necessarily that they're not training enough. It's they're really not recovering enough. These, these, a lot of men and women athletes, they get excited about the changes that are, that are being made when they start to exercise a lot. And they always feel that more is better. They're not doing a great job of paying attention to actually if, they, if they're continuing to grow and their body's recovering enough. So we really make it a point at Vision Quest to monitor athletes' recovery because if left to their own devices, they'll just keep training more and more and more and they'll start digging a hole. Like Dr. Cole said, do muscle breakdown, and then all of a sudden they'll have a decrease in, in overall performance because of it, even though they're training more. So, you know, some of the things we look at, um, a lot of our athletes, are in these wearable devices, and a really cool one is the Aura Ring, and that's the ring that I have all the athletes that I work with personally wear, and it tells us some really neat data. It tells us basically how much their exercise they're doing, right? That's pretty simple, but then when they go to sleep, it measures their deep sleep, their REM sleep, their body temperature, their resting heart rate, their HRV, um, and and a host of other things that really tell us when they wake up in the morning if their body's ready and rested to exercise. And it doesn't look at, like, a basic scale across everybody. It really learns the athletes first. It understands what their normal resting rate is. And if their heart rate's up five or six beats from their normal, it gives us a a little bit of a red light, and it tells us that they might not be recovered completely. So if we see enough of those red lights, uh, we tell the athletes to back off. And often it happens on the ring before they actually feel it themselves. So let, let me ask you a question. Um, first, of all, I want to just reinforce what you said, and I'll give you a, an example. I have a, a son who both my boys did uh, crew, and they would train basically every single day. And one in particular just was not building muscle mass and was not getting necessarily stronger or his erg times weren't getting better. And number one, they don't particularly spend time cross-training with other activities So to sort of take a system approach. And two, he wasn't getting enough calories. So nutrition, you know, there's so many components to it. You mentioned some great ones such as sleep um, and the quality of sleep. Uh, But if you don't feed your body or feed the furnace, if you will, the exercise actually ends up being detrimental, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. I think I think that there's all this misinformation about nutrition and and, and people are are really focused on eating less carbohydrates because, you know, they say like if they eat less carbohydrates, they're going to teach their bodies to burn fat better. And that's actually true to some degree. But for a young kid and for an athlete doing lots of high intensity exercise, our body really needs carbohydrates as a fuel source. And oftentimes making sure that you're replacing those carbohydrates especially on the summer and longer workout days. You're not training much, and you're not doing much at all. You don't need as many carbohydrates, but you really have to understand the body's need for, for the glycolytic energy system when you're doing high-intensity exercise, even endurance exercise as well, like rowing. Busy with Robin, Robbie Ventura. Robbie is the founder and owner of Vision Quest Coaching. I'm uh, talking about recovery for endurance athletes, both in and out of competition. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning. Steve Cashel and Dr. Brian Cole. 
And Robbie, um, you recently attended La Ruta, notoriously the toughest bike race in the world. Uh, when doing an event like this, what can be done to get an athlete feeling their best after the first eight-hour day when they are facing another eight hours the next day? Yeah, I mean, I think I might have bit off a little bit more than I can chew. I'm almost 50 years old and leave these epic events now for the younger kids. But, uh, yeah, that was a really tough one. We brought 15 athletes down to um, Costa Rica to really battle some of the toughest conditions in the world. And to keep the athletes going day after day, the same thing that the guys in the Tour de France have to do. And that's what Dr. Cole said, is make sure, number one, their nutrition is spot on and their hydration levels and their sodium levels are spot on. And that does, just doesn't mean like after the race, even the last couple of hours of the current race you're riding in, you're refueling and reloading the body with hydration, with seeds, with you know, sodium, and of course with calories. And most of those calories are the form of carbohydrate. And as soon as they finish, it's really important to get them clean, to get blood to the muscles. And they can do that through using like a Theragun or getting a massage or there's different ways. You can even do a little electric stem. You want to get the blood kind of flowing and recirculating. Nothing intense, nothing hard. Like you don't want a deep, heavy massage afterwards. You just want to make sure you start that process of recovery and obviously getting them to bed and getting some good, deep sleep so they can really think about uh, regenerating some of that, those hormones that are going to be important for the morning. And then, of course, in the morning, mentally, getting these guys excited again because we can do everything on the physical side possible, but mentally you have to get them excited and give them confidence they can go at it again for another day. And really the tactic that you're thinking about is not wasting your energy, being as conservative as you can, and really doling out your energy throughout the day so you don't detonate during that stage because that really starts to do some major muscular damage. So keeping track of yourself during the day, but ultimately really understanding as soon as that stage is over, start getting yourself prepared for day two. You know, Dr. Cole, uh, Robbie brought up the Theragun, and we had Dr. Jason, who um, is the uh, founder of the Theragun. I actually purchased one not long ago after we interviewed Dr. Jason. I'm using it on my shoulder, yeah. using it on my boys. One of my, my 12-year-old plays in two basketball leagues, had a little, maybe a little plantar fasciitis or something, and used it on his foot, and he loved it. Just felt like a, a deep massage. So, um, yeah, we uh, we had him on. I had to, had to purchase one. It's, it works great. It really does. And Robbie mentioned that as well for the high-endurance athletes. So right up the alley of uh, what we're talking here on uh, on Sports Medicine Weekly. So, Robbie, great job. If people want to get a hold of you, uh, what's the best way to do it? Yeah, just visionquestcoaching.com. we got a cool website, and, and we, we really focus, and like Dr. Cole said, on the components of recovery and making sure we're not wasting time and not getting much out of it. And, and I just think that I'm excited about making people faster on the bike, faster on the, on the water, running faster in the water. And um, come check us out at visionquestcoaching.com. We'll take good care of you. Great. Visionquestcoaching.com. Robbie Ventura, founder and owner a Vision Quest coaching nearly 20 years now. Thanks, Robbie. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks, guys. All righty. When we come back after this break, it'll be our staple of the show, our Ask the Doctor segment. Our website, sportsmedicineweekly.com. Steve Cashel and Dr. Brian Cole. Take a break. Be back with more right after this, only on 670 The Score. 